Welcome to another Highland High School video physics lesson. In today's lesson, we will derive and demonstrate the impulse momentum theorem. To explain the impulse momentum theorem, we first start off with Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion says that F equals MA. Now, we know that that means that when you have a force, it will cause a mass to accelerate. Now, what we can do is if we take some old um, equations and we replace A, for example, with its definition of a change in velocity over time, we can insert the equation so it looks more like this. So what we see now is that force equals mass times change in velocity over time. Now let's say that we're not a fan of fractions and we want to move the time out of here. We move the time to the other side by multipli uh, multiplication. We get rid of this fraction symbol. We move these two down just a little bit and we've derived the impulse momentum theorem. The impulse momentum theorem basically says that impulse, which is the product of force and time, will cause a change in momentum, which is the product of mass and an object's velocity. In this case, a mass and a change in the object's velocity. So this term over here is known as impulse, and this term over here is known as the change in momentum. It is basically Newton's second law simply restated. What this law is going to tell you is that the longer that you uh, experience a force, the greater will be the change in momentum. And that's what we will show you today. Now, there's a lot of applications of this. For example, uh, following through in sports. Um, when you're following through in sports, what you're doing is you're providing a relatively constant force, but you prolong the time in which the force is applied. So when you multiply the force times the time, since the mass of the object won't be able to change, the change in the velocity is going to be greater. We also know that um, we've used this in other examples. For example, when you fall, when you fall and you jump out of a tree, for example, we know that it's typical to try to bend your knees so that when you hit the ground, you kind of cushion yourself. Well, what you're actually doing when you're cushioning yourself is you're prolonging the amount <clears throat> of time that you're going to take to stop um, and what you're trying to do is change your velocity by the same amount because if you smack the concrete or if you hit the ground soft, it really doesn't matter because whatever speed you go into the ground at, you must uh, eventually stop. So you're going to have the same changing speed in both cases. Again, since your mass won't change, that means that if you, if you want to keep the same constant uh, change in velocity, then by prolonging the amount of time, the force will respond by decreasing. Okay, these are two applications that should be very common to you in Newton's second law. To finish off today's lesson, we're just going to go to the PHET site, and I'm going to demonstrate um, what happens when you apply a force through a time and how it does change your velocity. To demonstrate this principle, I have a we're looking at the force in motion simulation on PHET, and what I'm going to basically do is I'm going to apply a force um, to this refrigerator for different amounts of time. So we notice if I apply this force for a brief amount of time, we see that as I applied the force, the fridge began to accelerate. When the fridge began to accelerate, um, it moved, and then I let go of it and it continued at a constant velocity. So we saw with a very short amount of time, we saw that it, um, it didn't go very fast. Now what we'll do this time is we're going to reset our parameters. We're going to go back to the original position. I'm going to apply the force for a greater amount of time and we see that the refrigerator goes faster because I prolonged the amount of time that I applied the force. The product of the force and the time resulted in a greater delta V. We'll do this one more time, but this time I'll provide a much longer force. So we see that we apply our force for a longer period of time and we see by the end that the refrigerator is moving much faster than it did in the first situation. Again, this is due to the impulse momentum theorem. The longer that I applied the force, so the same force with an increased amount of time leads to a larger delta V. Hopefully this, this lesson helped clarify what the impulse momentum theorem is. Please stay tuned for other lessons to see how problems involving the impulse momentum theorem are solved.